Well, most people forget that it was only about 70 years ago or so that most scientists thought that the uh, universe was eternal and unchanging. And then the motion of the galaxies away from the Earth and away from each, other's was, uh, each other was noticed. And that was the beginning of the Big Bang Theory. Now, many people have thought that the Big Bang has theological overtones. What caused this thing to occur? And many people have uh, thought that it was the creation. If something, if the Big Bang was the creation of nature, of time and space itself, then there must have been something outside of nature that was the cause of it. And so the Big Bang theory uh, has really kind of ties in a, a number of developments from uh, different areas of science tie in to the idea of intelligent design. This supports the idea that there is something beyond nature, beyond matter and motion. And if that thing is a mind that can act, then perhaps it set the universe in motion, and perhaps this mind, this uh, creator, could have done other things as well. And so when we look in nature and we see things suspiciously looking like they were designed, uh, things like uh, the anthropic coincidences where the charge on the electron and the mass of the proton and the gravitational constant all seem to be extremely fine-tuned and if they were a little bit different life simply could not have developed in the universe. When we see things like that and when we see the irreducible complexity of biological systems and when we see the intractability of the problem of the origin of life all of these things reinforce each other and point strongly to the conclusion that something beyond nature, something that planned nature, uh, was necessary for the development of the universe and life. There are limits to natural science. Natural science can only uh, investigate material processes and uh, matter and motion. And uh, to the extent that there are other things which really exist, which are not material processes, which are not matter and motion, then science cannot investigate those things. And again, to the extent that uh, non-physical uh, beings or non-physical processes were involved in uh, originating the universe and originating life or in any other uh, event affecting things in the universe, science will have a difficult time, that is, an impossible time, uh, uh, to investigate those. That does not mean, however, that science can't draw some conclusions. They can, uh, scientists can uh, see uh, the physical world as it is and can make some pretty good um, estimations of what would have had to go into uh, designing the physical world and uh, can conclude, I think, that there is no known process and that uh, the process that uh, was responsible for it is likely to have been something outside the universe. Uh, when one thinks of the Big Bang, uh, one can see that uh, perhaps something outside of the physical universe was required to, to initiate that. And, you can extend this reasoning to origin of life, chemistry, and, and other things as well. A project funded by the federal government for, oh, 10, 15 years or so, uh, called the SETI project, which stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. And scientists engaged in that project used radio telescopes to scan the, uh, the universe for evidence of radio signals uh, perhaps originating from some alien planet being sent to the Earth. They were confident. Now, there's a lot of radio uh, waves in, in uh, space arising from natural processes. But they were confident that they could detect an intelligently designed radio wave even in the background of, of uh, natural radio waves. And so they were confident that they could detect intelligent design, too. And I just think that we can apply the same reasoning to biological systems. That is, we can detect a, an intelligently designed purposive system uh, just by looking at the system, 
realizing what the criteria are, that it, it has to be a functional system, that it has to be a complex system. The same sorts of criterion, uh, altered for uh, biology, but the same sorts of criteria that the astronomers used to see if they could detect uh, radio waves from other planets. I think every age tries to describe life and, and things pertaining to life in terms of the newest machinery that they are familiar with. And William Paley in the early 1800s, uh, 1800s mechanical contrivances were still uh, relatively new and still evoked uh, you know, a, a sense of wonderment as, as they should. They're really neat. And, uh, Paley then uh, uh, used a watch as an example of something that was designed and then showed how a number of organisms had uh, very complex features that would put the watch to shame and, and then extended the analogy and said just as the watch had a maker, uh, so did the, uh, the organisms. And uh, many people today say like in... Uh, liken organisms to, or liken DNA, to a set of computer instructions. Uh, and so they ascribe um, the, they like to make the analogy that just as a computer program required a programmer, life required a, a programmer as well. And uh, that analogy is, I think, is somewhat less charming than, than William Paley's analogy, but it makes the same point. And, and I think both Paley's and the, this analogy are equally valid. Uh, in any age, uh, we see the, the problem of the complexity of living systems, the fact that complex systems are put together by intelligent agents, and we naturally make the uh, association that, that life, too, required a, 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 a maker. I think uh, science can do a lot of work uh, from an intelligent design point of view. Uh, it's, it's the case in science when you get a, a new theory or a new paradigm, then frequently the kinds of questions that are asked differ from what was asked under the old paradigm. So, for example, Darwinian uh, evolution would ask the question of uh, how did natural selection produce a certain feature. In intelligent design theory, one could think that natural processes did not produce a certain feature, that it had to have been planned. But one could ask uh, a question such as, uh, well, what are the limits of intelligent design, or what are the limits of natural processes? To say that some things in life are designed some very complex uh, biological systems, is not to say that, that everything is designed. Certainly, perhaps, the, the eye might be designed, but you know, the shape of my nose might not be a matter of, 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 of uh, explicit design. So one could look at uh, a number of uh, molecular systems. I'm a biochemist, so that's what interests me the most. Uh, things like uh, DNA replication and... and uh, uh, the expression of genetic information uh, in the genetic code and, and ask, and there are a number of parts to these systems, you can ask which parts seem to have been explicitly designed, which parts seem like they may have been designed, and which parts look like they could have arisen uh, strictly through natural processes. Uh, so that's, that's just one feature of intelligent, or one, one question that you can ask under a, an intelligent design point of view.